You know, my grandson loved this song by Ty Trivet. It's called New. And he got new, 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 everything new, new, new. Hey, hey. And see, that's what we are. Everything is new. And we thank God for that. He says new. You know, uh, like, 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 like. I, I ain't talking about from a used deal, but he says new, like coming right out of the stove. Yeah, that's the kind of new that we're dealing with. So we thank God that God is doing everything and he's given us everything new. You see, on last Sunday, I asked a question, where do you stand? Hmm. And if you answer that you were on the Lord's side, then everything about you was made new. You see, Paul explained this uh, the ramifications of this doctrine he gave in, in, in the first three chapters of uh, the book of uh, Ephesians. He, he explained that God chose us for salvation from the foundations of the world. We didn't understand it. We didn't know anything about it, but he chose us for salvation from the foundations of the world. He had already had a plan in motion because he knew we were going to mess up. He knew everything about us. It says that uh, he redeemed, I ain't going to say you, he redeemed me through the sacrificial debt of his son, Jesus Christ. It was no other way. We can try everything else and do all the things that we think that man wanted us to do, but it didn't amount to a hill of being, so he had to sin his only begotten son to step out of the power and the glory of heaven to come down and walk this steps that we call earth to show us the way. It was a new season. We didn't understand. It was a new season. But Jesus Christ came and he forgave us of our sins and he, God adopted us as his children. Oh, as bad as we were, he adopted us anyhow. He, he, he brought us in. So, so we thank God for that. Not only did he adopt us, but, but he lavished upon us riches. My father in heaven is riches. Rich, and all that he has is mine. I just have to claim it. Riches. He said, I, I, I give you all of this. And then with his grace, and you know the grace is, is God's redemption at Christ's expense. It didn't cost us nothing, but it cost Jesus his life. He gave us an inheritance to the kingdom of heaven with Christ. You see, we were dead in our trespasses and dead in our sins and were made alive by God because of his great, his great love for us. We didn't even love ourselves. He loved us more than we loved ourselves. He extended to us by his grace through Jesus Christ. In other words, the old song says, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. I had a what? Crimson stain, and he washed it white as snow. You know, by his grace and the, 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 the barriers that, that was between you and God, because you've got to understand that God has no, 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 no part of sin. So there was only one way. We had to be clean in order to get back to God. Jesus became that bridge over troubled waters. You know, see, that was a big gulf fix in between us. God was on one side and we were on the other. And we had no way of getting back. And Jesus became that bridge that allowed us to get back to God. And when we did that, everything became new. We didn't understand it. It says that because we have been broken and, and you've been brand new as part of the body of Christ. That's just saying a lot. Lord, no, Lord, I, even after all I, the things I've done, everything that I've been through, the many times I let you down, Lord, you still love me enough that you sent your son to suffer, die upon the cross, that I might have a right back to you. You know, I, I, I think about that sometimes. What would we have done? Would we have sacrificed the only loved one 
so that somebody else might have a right to love or be a part of something? You know, Lord, no, come on, now let's be real about it. No, we wouldn't. Just tell the truth, shame the devil. But see, when a person becomes a Christian, they become a new Christian, a new creature. Now, in, in Second, uh, Second uh, Corinthians 5, it says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. Like right out of the stove, new. Uh, I don't have to get hand-me-down. It's new. I'm brand new. I'm dressed up and ready to go because God has washed me white as snow. You see, then it says that uh, when, you know, when we were coming up, prior to the salvation, you know, we did, we didn't accept anything that Christ had. Everything that he gave us, we were living outside. We, we didn't understand spiritual things. You know, it, it, it's kind of like being dead. When you're dead, you don't know it. When you're stupid, you don't know it. Hello, somebody. I say, you know, sometimes we don't know it. But, but everybody else knows, but you don't know it. So, so it's kind of like being like that. We were in a fix, didn't know how bad off we were. So you've got to understand that God saved us from ourselves. We were so stupid, but we didn't know it. Gave us everything. Put us in a garden with everything around us. All we had to do was just walk around all day. Had everything to eat. Nothing to worry about. Didn't have to worry about it. Guess what? We didn't even have to worry about clothes because it didn't make a difference. All of a sudden, the open, devil opened our eyes. Oh, I'm, I'm naked. Then you had to run to the store and get Lily Ann's and all these other things. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, see, pastor don't wear all them big brand names, but, you know, y'all wear all them brand names? I, 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 I wear those, those brand names, too. I wear Polly and Esther. You know, I say, hey, I put them on that, and I'm good. I'm not worried about all that other stuff. I thank God that I'm able just to be able to walk in his. You know, so we were... We were, like I said, we were stuck on stupid and didn't know it. And you know, it said being a, you don't know, but the, the true Christian, true Christian, let me say that again, true Christian has a mind of Christ. We change the things that we used to do. We no longer live in the way that we used to live but instead, we live according to a, a new nature. Because, you know, you remember when you were coming up and you just, you were so bad that you, you, you didn't care about nothing. You just did it. But once you came into Christ, the things that you used to do when you try to do them, that country said, you know better than that. You weren't raised that way. All those things come back to your mind when you change that mind. When you go from being stupid until you go to learning who you really are. You know, say so we are raw priesthood, created a little bit lower than, than angels. When we take authority to who we are, then we know how we ought to walk. You see, a summary of the Christian life can be found in, in these three infirmities. First, it says that we ought to lay aside. We've got to lay aside. The second is to be renewed. And the third is that we need to put on. You see, we should lay aside the old self, <laughs> that old form of life. To lay aside means to step, to strip off, taking off those filthy clothes, your filthy garments of sin, of trespasses, of all the stuff, and be clothed in righteousness. You know, you know, just think about it now. If you came home and you were all in those old filthy clothes and they were smelling and you took a shower and you put on the same dirty clothes, uh, hello, somebody. So you said, once I clean you up, uh, you don't want to go back and put on the old, same old dirty clothes. Getting cleaned up and putting on the... <laughs> Uh, aftershave and all that, you know, you can be dirty as I don't know what, but if you put on them old clothes, you can put on all the aftershave and all the perfume you want, but it ain't going to change a thing. 
you still smell. Come on. <laughs> you know, so, so you can't dress it up. You got to make the change. You can't just go back and, and, and take Oh, smell it close and say, I'm going to put on some. Man, the worst thing you can do, the Lord knows, is, is have somebody musty and everything that spray that perfume or, or aftershave on that. Lord have mercy. Look here, it makes you want to have God. I'm like, God, you know, <laughs> that ain't what you need. <laughs> you need something else. <laughs> In the same way that you have been made alive to Christ, you don't want to go back and put on them old grave crows. He done puck you up. He done gave you new life. I got a life in heaven. I don't want to put on the grave clothes. That's going to take me right back to that old cemetery. See, they call it stinking thinking. You know, hey, see, if you stinking thinking, that's where you're headed. But you got to change your mind and be able to go in a different direction. You know, to use a computer analogy, you know, for all you tech-minded folk, you know, that ain't me, but uh, you tech-minded folk, uh, let's make it plain. You, 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 you got a new com computer and a new operating system, but you still got to get rid of that old stuff on the hard drive. Am I right? Am I right, Jonah? If you got all that old stuff on the hard drive, it ain't going to work with that new system. You got to change all that stuff out of there. You got to make it new. You delete the old programs and install new ones. Well, that's all he's saying. We got to delete some of these old programs we got. All that stuff that was in it. Delete them old programs. Install a new program that takes you to a different walk, a different way of talking, a different way of living, even a different way of giving. Amen. Because when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me, all I can do is just shout, shout, shout. Every time I turn around, he's making a way. Yes, Lord. You say, you say, we are new creatures in Christ and made by him holy and righteous in our position between God. And by practice, we are what? Learning to live in holiness. We're not there. We are learning to live in holiness and righteousness. You see, once you become a Christian, it just doesn't stop there. It starts there. You have to keep learning. And if I want to learn what I'm supposed to be, I got to read that Bible. I got to understand. I got to know what God wants me to do next. You know, if you go on a job, on a new job, and, and you may start out, I don't care how many years you go to college, what kind of degree you got, any job that you go on, you still gonna have to learn their system. So when you go in, they're going to give you how they do things. Well, that's where the Bible is for us. We have to learn what God wants us to do, how he wants us to react. So you have to understand that sometimes the stuff that you learned before, you have to unlearn them. Don't think about them. You know, I remember going back to, to, to school, taking up a, a computer technology. And I went in there, and, and one thing the professor told me, what I'm teaching you today, by the time you graduate, it's going to be obsolete. You'll have to go back to school to learn a new way. I'm saying, wow. So if that happens in technology, what do you think is going to happen in life? The little stuff that you learn today, you've got to keep studying in order to know what I'm going to do for the tomorrow. Because tomorrow is going to be a different day, different time. We see it every day. Look around you. The things they do now, I didn't even think about doing. Some of the things these kids do now, Lord have mercy. I wouldn't be here if I even thought about doing them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We couldn't even say a lie. Oh, no, we, she, told, she told a story. Stuff I see on the cartoons, we couldn't even say. I'm saying, wow. But this is a different time, so we have to keep learning. We have to keep learning. God keeps teaching us. It's, it's, let me tell you one thing about it now. They say it's a, it, it, the, the Christian, I mean, Christianity is evolving. No, Christianity isn't evolving. Man is changing, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. My Bible says God changes not. So we're changing. We're changing to accept the things that we used to not accept. 
some of that junk we go through now, Lord knows, I wouldn't even think about doing. You know, I remember even in the church. See, in the church I grew up in, I was in one of those churches that, oh, they were strict Methodists. On first Sunday, hello, hello, you know what I'm talking about. On first Sunday, if you didn't sing holy, 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 on the first Sunday, that pastor was getting ready to be moved. <laughs> you, had to, you had to sing out of that. The first thing they asked you, is that out of the hymnal? <laughs> I remember uh, doing a revival over there at Union and uh, invited over a good friend of mine, Pastor Leonard Barksdale. Barksdale said, when I, usually when I go to Methodist church, it's two things. I bring my Bible and I bring my hymnal. He said, but more than that, since I've been there, y'all ain't saying nothing out the hymnal yet. I said, hey, but you learn to praise God in different ways. You know, because see, I used to sit in the choir and I said, man, I ain't getting in that choir, man. <laughs> I don't like what they singing until we got a gospel choir. And so we have to understand that God, sometimes the way we operate changes, but God changes not. We have to learn to, to uh, entertain him the way we are. Then we have to put on. We are new creatures in Christ and made by him holy, righteous, and acceptable unto God. In our new position, we have to practice God. We are learning to live in holiness and righteousness. Our struggle exists between God and, 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 and his place, a new creature within us. If there is no struggle, hmm, hello, there is no new, new nature. So you're always struggling. Sometimes God allows you to struggle to find out where you are. You say you love me. You say you trust me. Let's see. Let's see what you're going through. And then it goes down. Let's go down to verse 25 now. We're going to look at verse 25 in that scripture. And uh, where we pick up. And he tells us how we're supposed to act now. God tells us what we're supposed to do. In verse 25, it says, Wherefore, putting away all lying. Hello? Hello? You know, we've got to change the way that we deal, the way that we talk, the way that we speak. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Be ye angry and sin not. Hello, somebody. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Hey, now, this ain't nothing new. This been in here. But we just got to keep reading it. We got to keep reading it until it dwells in there. Neither give place to the devil. See, when you get upset at somebody and you're so mad, you know, that's why we got all these killings going. I shoot somebody because they're in my parking spot. I'm shooting you because you took my grocery basket. Man, what is going on with the world? You know, all these things that we're going, we got to understand that we got to look at God for who he is. You know, he says that, uh, you know, we don't give place to the devil. Because the devil, we know he's no good. His job is to go around and cause confusion. And he's doing it. We got so much confusion in the church right now. We don't even know where to go. We sit around, we got to plan a meeting right now to find out, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? It's all about God. That's Satan causing confusion in his church. If I can confuse church people, then, hey, my biggest battle is won. Because if I can change the mind of church folk, then the world is already with me. They're already running with me. So I don't have to worry about them. But I'm trying to get the church people to understand. Then in that verse 28, let him that stole steal no more. You remember not, you know, that's the way God is. See, God, you remember the lady at the well? When he healed, he said, now, go and do what? Sin no more. So he blesses us, said, go and sin no more. But we got, we, got, we got to change the way we walk, change how we do things, change how we operate, change how we treat each other. You know, this world, if we were just, could, you know, what would happen if we all could all get along? You know, we, it's so much black and white, Republican, Democrat. You know, we, we're too much fighting for different things that we forget the real reason why we're here. 
You know, it's all, if we do everything in love, all this other stuff will take care of itself. Uh, even in the deal, we're dealing with all this gay and lesbian. Let me tell you something. If we walk in the spirit of God and we do what God says to do and allow things to happen like they happen, God is going to be the one that separates the, the wheat from the tear. I can't put you in the heaven. I can't take you out of heaven. So it's not my business. That's between you and your God. My job is to preach God's word. I put it out there. You either accept it or you don't accept it. And I'm out of it. You know, I don't have to worry about it. See, we got too much going on, too much that we put on our plate that we don't have to worry about. God has already taken care of that. But we, the thing is, we want to be God now. We want to run things. You ain't running nothing. He running it anyhow. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the things which is good that he may have to give to him that is needed. You know, sometimes uh, I know you drive around the corner, it's always somebody on the corner begging. I'm going to tell you, it eats my heart to pass up somebody. I sat there and I, I was going through, I saw a lady this morning and, at a, uh, McDonald's, and, and I wanted to ask, sister, what, what did you do to get you in this situation? You know, what, what, what's really going on? You know, because see, I can look at that and I said, but for the grace of God, they'll go out. You know, I don't know why God got me around, man, but we got to stay. We got to remember, yes, you are your brother's keeper, and we have to remember that. And sometimes I know, yeah, if you give, and they use it for something other than what they took it for. Guess what? You took it off of you. You put it on them. And so we, we thank God just for being able to give. Then it says that, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Right? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Ooh. James, in the book of James, it said, this, this, this is a deadly weapon. Oh, that's going to kill them. many a folk. Oh, Lord. And, and if they, I'm, I'm going to tell you something about it, too. Once you say something, you can't reach out and get it. It's out there. You can't get it. It's out there. You done said it. and nothing you can do about it now. But James said, this is a deadly weapon. Oh, God. You can, you know, oh, speak death on folk. You know, you know sometimes you just destroyed people's lives by something that you said. You don't realize it, but it, it, it happened. So we have to understand that we have to watch how we walk and entertain. Because that is a, you know, it says that let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use for what? For edifying, building up. Make you say, you know, sometimes you can take a brother and say, bro, you don't have to live like you're doing. You can do better than that. I know you can, because I know, I know you better than that. Instead of saying, man, <laughs> I can see him now. <laughs> man, I ain't going to hear that old Monet boy. Boy, I remember him when he was out there, boy, say, no. You don't know. You don't know what somebody can go. You don't know how God, God uses you for different things. You don't know what he took you through in order to get, to, get you to where you are today. He said, you do that that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And this is one, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Ooh, we got a lot of folk. It don't take all of that to praise God. It might not take all that for you. You don't know how God has blessed me. You don't know what he's taken me through. You don't know how I feel. And so just because you sit there and you too ashamed to say hallelujah or clap your hands, don't. Hey, hey, if you won't let me shout here, I just go out to my farm and I can shout all over there. Hey, you know, I don't have to worry about you. If you spend time worried about yourself, you won't have time to worry about me. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. You don't know. The Holy Spirit hits everybody different. I had one member in the church one time. She said, well, mom, you don't, you don't make noise in church. 
It's okay. Let me see. I read the 150th number of Psalms said David danced. He all out of his clothes. It got so good to him. He said, like fire, shut up in my bones. I just can't keep it in. You don't know, but like you ain't gone through nothing. You don't understand that. So don't grieve the Holy Spirit for somebody else just because you don't understand. You know, it says that. Uh, for ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You got to remember, that stuff you spend on somebody else is coming right back at you. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. To God, that's one thing about the Bible. The Bible tells us everything about how we ought to act, what we supposed to do. All we got to do is read it. That's why I call it the basic instructions before leaving earth. That's all you got to do is read it. It's got all the instructions in there. Then it says that as we close out, it says, and be ye kind one to another. Be tenderhearted, hmm. forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. That's a mouthful right there. If God were to hold everything against us that we've done wrong, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. But thank God that I serve a forgiving God. Though I be filthy, <laughs> he can wash me white as snow. That's the God I serve. I love him because he first loved me. Oh God. And when I'm new in Christ, everything is new. The way I walk, the way I talk, the way I live, the way I give. And if God put you on stand for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence? To convict you. And we say it all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For everything is new. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Oh, I give you Christ. My Lord, I give you Yes, Lord. <laughs>